welcome back to Smart Japanx. Uh, you see here the Tamiya cutting mat, which means that we are due for another book deep dive, if you can call it that. So this is Remembering the Kanji Volume 1. And if you've been following this channel for a while, you might know that if there's one book I recommend you get to learn Japanese, it's this book. The reason for this is that kanji is the biggest obstacle to learning Japanese by far. Whether you succeed or not will be largely determined by how well you manage to learn kanji. And this book will help you with just that. You might see now that this isn't the way that uh, the book looks right now. And this is because this is an older edition. This is from... Let's see, this is from... 2002. This is the fourth edition. So yeah, there's some new uh, kanji added to the new uh, edition. So if you can, you can of course pick that up. Why I really enjoy uh, and why I think it's important to pick up a book on kanji is that while you might be able to speak Japanese fluently without learning kanji or knowing them that well, uh, kanji can actually be a huge help along the way. And since so many Japanese words are constructed from kanji, knowing what they mean will make new words much easier to understand. In fact, you'll be able to understand many new words just from the kanji alone. So reading real Japanese is also an option that becomes available once you know the kanji. People tend to forget that you can't really read Japanese without knowing the kanji. Of course, there's furigana some places, but usually not. So you need to learn the kanji and you can actually benefit a lot from it. So. But since learning kanji is such a huge task, you have a lot of people who have spent years learning Japanese who kind of know the language but they still don't manage to read it. They still can't read real Japanese. If you think of how much reading you're doing in your native language, it quickly becomes apparent how much of a disadvantage this is. For the philosophy behind this book, I'll just read uh, a few sentences from the introduction here. So what he writes is, the aim of this book is to provide the student of Japanese with a simple method for correlating the writing system and the meaning of Japanese characters in such a way as to make them both easy to remember. It is intended not only for the beginner, but also for the more advanced student looking for some relief to the constant frustration of forgetting how to write the kanji, and some way to systematize what he or she already knows. By showing how to break down the complexities of the Japanese writing system into its basic elements and suggesting ways to reconstruct meaning from those elements, the method offers a new perspective from which to learn the kanji. So that's basically the aim of this book here, and it will help you to do just that. So like it says here, you know, the way the book works is that you take kanji and you break them down into what the book call, calls elements. And elements are usually the radicals of the kanji, but they don't necessarily uh, overlap all the time. So I'm just going to... Hayakuchi kotoba. Namamugi, <laughs> namamugi, namagome, namatamago. <laughs> yeah. You see this book, it's actually been in use. I don't remember what this is for or what I had, but you know. I'll just put it somewhere else. <laughs> so yeah, we can just skip a bit here. You know, see, um, what the book does, it, it takes these elements and it creates uh, stories out of them. And the stories help you remember the kanji. And in the beginning, it will give you the story uh, here. And then you will uh, uh, gradually just it will gradually just list up the elements and then you will create the stories uh, yourself. So for example, here, the basis of this character is the character for the sun. I'm not sure if you can see it. You can find the original here. And here, so this character is labeled as uh, this kanji is intended to be a pictograph of the sun. Recalling what we said in the previous frame about ground forms, it's easy to detect that the circle and the big uh, smile that characterize the simplest of drawing of the sun, like those yellow badges with the words "Have a nice day." So, used as a primitive, this kanji can mean sun or day or a tongue wagging in the mouth. This latter meaning incidentally draws from an old character outside of the standard list of meaning something that sayeth, and written exactly the same except that the stroke in the middle does not touch the right side. So this is the other country that it refers to. But anyway, 
this is one of the basic countries that it just gives you in the beginning uh, and you know you use it as day to remember the character for white which is also really basic so you probably already know it but it has this element listed as a drop of so a drop of day which you see here uh, the color white is a mixture of all the primary colors both for pigments and for light as we see when a prism breaks up the rays of the sun hence a single drop of sun spells white as a primitive this character can either retain its meaning of white or take the more graphic meaning of white a white bird or dove this is just to, to help it uh, become easier to remember so now if you think of white what was the character for white again oh it's a drop of day something like that you know for example here also olden times you know uh, a walking stick is needed for days of olden times since days to get old at least insofar as we refer to them as the good old days this the main thing here is to think of the good old days when you hear the keyword olden times the rest will take care of itself so if we drop, you know, if we go to the part here, you see in later lessons, you will just get the, the elements, you know, the name of the elements here. Here, in order to remember uh, this character for wa, for hum, harmony, uh, you have to, you can use the elements for wheat and mouth, and then you construct a story out of that yourself. That makes you remember the character. So this can be whatever you want, but you know, for example here, when it comes to taxes, wheat and the devil those are the two primitives or the two elements and it means tax so then you construct it a story out of that to remember help you remember the two elements so for example can you imagine a devil coming to collect wheat as a tax or something like that you know you create the story yourself so the book as you can see is filled with all the characters here and then it lists up the characters at the end which is great because then you can go through them again, you know, and make sure you, you remember them. So have them arranged in order <coughs> of strokes and, and so on. So yeah, yeah. as a book mode, you just have the elements listed like I, I showed you. And the reason I really love this book is that it made me learn kanji really fast. So to learn all these kanji, I just spent a whole month actually doing nothing but learning kanji using this book. And I think it really paid off because kanji is something that students of Japanese struggle with throughout their, uh, you know, career, if you can say. They struggle with it throughout their journey. So tackling it head on in the beginning can really free up a lot of time in the end because then you don't have to spend a lot of time relearning the kanji over and over again. So uh, if this book is so great, uh, why don't everyone, why doesn't everyone use it, you might ask? Well, right now this book has uh, five and a half stars on Amazon, with the top review being an extremely negative one. And the main criticism against the book seems to be two things. One is that you don't learn the readings of the character. You only learn how to attach an English word to it and then how to write it yourself and recognize the character when you see it. So if you see this book here, you know, there's only a, a meaning attached to the kanji. There's only one meaning also, even though a kanji might be used for several words. I have more meanings. So, so yeah, my response to this would be that memorizing the character even without the reading is extremely valuable. And this is the reason why so many Chinese people learn Japanese so fast. The Chinese is grammatically very different from Japanese, but since they already know kanji, they can make sense of Japanese a lot faster. So using this book will give you this advantage as well, even if you don't speak Chinese. Now, some people might label this as inefficient, but in the long run, you'll save a lot of time doing this. You will need to remember the characters regardless, so you might as well do it all at once. Now, the second criticism leveled at this book is that the English words uh, attributed to the characters and the uh, elements or primitives don't match exactly the meaning of the kanji, or that they don't convey more than one thing, uh, even if the character has several meanings. Now, this is actually true, but in practice I've never had much problem with this uh, because you learn the meaning through learning the words associated with the kanji. The second book covers the readings read from Chinese known as onyomi. The readings of Japanese origin are known as kunyomi and are better learned when you encounter them. And the reason for this is that kanji originated in China and there's no real logical link between how the kunyomi sounds are used and the radicals of the kanji. There's also one more criticism that's not as common that I also heard uh, 
when I actually tried to introduce this book to my classmates, and several of them got them, got the the, the books, but uh, not everyone uh, were as thrilled with them. And one of the criticisms I heard was this: this was just a, a cash grab by the author, as the first book here only contains the meaning of the characters. And the readings are presented in the second book of the series, so many people have commented that separating this into two books allowed it to make uh, so much more money. But anyone really familiar with the margins of the book business would know uh, that this claim doesn't really hold up. But you know, as a student I can understand if money is a bit tight, but you don't have to get the newest edition of this book. The, the real valuable thing here is the system. So. Uh, you can just get the books used instead, just as long as you get the, the same the same edition. So if you get, for example, this edition of uh, Volume 1, and then you go for the newest edition of Volume 2, the characters don't uh, exactly add up. But like I said, the valuable thing here is the system. So as long as you learn the system, you can memorize kanji outside of this list as well, uh, fairly easily. So the book basically trains you to do that. So that's uh, a large part of the appeal. And some other people have also complained about the order the kanji are uh, presented in. They are ordered this way to make them easier to memorize, as one character builds upon the next. So if you see here, I just go to the back of the book. So you see, first it just goes through the numbers because you know them probably already. And then you have, you know, the basic shapes, you know, for mouth and then for day and moon and, uh, you know, so on. And then you see it gradually builds upon the shapes so it makes it easier to remember and then it adds you know another shape and then you know it, it builds upon that and adds uh, more primitives or more radicals and then goes from there so this is really the easiest way that I found to, to remember all of them and that explains uh, why they are ordered this way so this means that you learned uh, you might learn a kanji from a simple word a lot later on than you would in a normal textbook. And what this means is that it might take a while longer before you encounter all of the most commonly used characters in the language. And this doesn't really matter much in the grand scheme of things, as you will not forget the kanji you memorized from this book easily. Uh, if you were to just memorize kanji the old-fashioned way by writing them over and over again, you'll spend a lot more time than you would using this method. There's also been complaints about the book containing some characters that aren't really useful and that is true you know if you see uh, the last characters here I mean some of them are useful some of them not so much but the reason for this is that the book contains all the common use kanji which are the kanji that the Japanese government wants everyone to know so memorizing a few characters that you might end up not using is hardly a reason to throw away the whole book. Because, like I said before, the system here is really what's important. So I really encourage you to give this book a go. Uh, everyone I've met who managed to learn Japanese at a high level has used uh, a system to learn the kanji. It might not have been this one, but a lot of the cases it has been this book that has helped them to, to memorize the kanji. So learning kanji is just too big of a task to successfully learn it's just too big of a task to successfully learn all the common use kanji, unless you have a system to learn it. So whether or not you like the system presented in this book is up to you, of course, but give it a shot at least. Uh, it certainly worked for me. So I hope you found that useful. And if you liked the video, hit the like button, uh, subscribe if you haven't done it already, and hit the bell button as well. And I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye. And thank you so much for watching. No problem. <laughs> Never give up!